Follow me now. Malcolm was this magnificent orator. He could spit words out so fast, he knew the root of words. He could beat people down with words. I watched him on so many occasions. I loved him. I was fascinated by this magnificent man. He was the link to Elijah Muhammad for me. I sat under Malcolm. I listened to him. I learned from him. I extracted what all I could from not only his words, but I found Malcolm to be an extremely disciplined human being. And now, you all may say, well, um, uh, I like Malcolm by any means necessary. <laughs> and some of you won't take a bath. No, 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 wait, wait, no, don't, don't, don't get angry with me. But nobody that stinks can claim Malcolm. Malcolm was so clean that when they opened him up on the operating table to take the bullets out of him, the doctor said he had never seen a body so clean in all of his life. Malcolm never ate more than one meal a day. I never saw him break that discipline, not one time. I never saw Malcolm chew a piece of gum. I never saw Malcolm eat a piece of candy in between his meals. Malcolm was a praying man. He would wake me up when I stayed in his house at 4.30 so we could wash and be ready for Fajr prayer. You can't claim Malcolm and you don't pray. You can't claim Malcolm and you won't even take a shower. You can't claim Malcolm and you're still smoking reefers and popping cocaine and misusing and abusing people. You can't claim Malcolm if you won't read a book. Y'all all right? And you know what convinced Malcolm? Malcolm was a realist. You can't be a pimp. Now listen, please. You can't be a pimp and a hustler and a stick-up man and believe in mystery. You've got a gun in your hand, you've got to calculate. You've got to think, you've got to plan. When you've got women in your stable that making money for you, you've got to think and plan. You ain't, you ain't dealing with mystery here. When you're a dope seller, you're not dealing with mystery, you count it. And when a man is cheating you, you got to count how you're going to deal with the cheat. Because if he cheats you today and you let him get away, he'll cheat you tomorrow so, you, you make, so you're going to deal on him. See, the world of crime and the world of the streets is a real world. This is why you can't get the gangbangers into church if you're going to take them into outer space and don't know how to get them out or bring them back. They're not going with you. These young people want to deal with a real world. They don't want no fanciful foolishness. Are you listening to me? So you can't tell me that Malcolm all of a sudden went to Mecca and had some tea with some white folk and got convinced that the world was going to be better. Not the Malcolm that I know. I want you to listen to me well. I've been to Mecca about five to seven times. Malcolm went to Saudi Arabia in 1959, not in 64. He went and preceded Elijah Muhammad there. He saw white Muslims in Jeddah. He didn't go to Mecca. He was invited to go to Mecca. But he said he did not want 
to be the first in the nation of Islam to go to Mecca. He wanted his leader to have that privilege, so he did not go and deferred that privilege to his leader, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But he saw in Jeddah white Muslims. So to come back now and say that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad lied when he said no devils go to Mecca. No devil can go to Mecca. Now wait a minute. I thought you were saying that he called white people devils. Yeah, those that act like devils. But those that bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger, you have no right to call that kind of human being a devil because the Quran said evil is a bad name after faith. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad sat down at his table with white Muslims and fed them and talked to them and treated them with honor and respect as well as Christians who knew how to respect him, he respected and honored them. And he taught us never to mistreat another human being, no matter what their color is. Is that right? Now listen. Malcolm saw the beautiful ritual of Hajj. It's a beautiful ritual, but that's all it is. Talk to me, Muslims. If the principles inherent in the ritual were carried into practice, there would be no racism and no nationalism in Islam. Talk to me, Muslim scholars. Prophet Muhammad set up no nation but the nation of Islam. Prophet Muhammad didn't set up Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Bahrain, the Emirates, Algeria, Libya, Morocco, Tunisia. He didn't set that up. He didn't set up Egypt. He set up one nation, Islam. And every human being, black, brown, red, yellow, or white, who bowed down to God, we, he said, our brothers. Is that the teaching of the prophet? So the ritual of all colors coming to Mecca, stripping their national garment, was a sign that nationalism had to be given up in order to accept the universal principle of brotherhood. You can't bring your riches to Mecca. We all come as pilgrims. It's a beautiful ritual that ends with the sacrifice of life of a camel or an animal of some sort, showing you that you can't approach God unless you are willing to sacrifice your life Give up the old way and die so that you can become new in him. Isn't that the teaching of Christianity? You've got to die in the old mind of the old world in order to become renewed in Christ. The ritual of Hajj is a beautiful ritual. But in Islam there's racism, nationalism, materialism. And idolatry exists today. Malcolm was not moved by ritual. He saw the value in it. And he saw whites who were trying to practice Islam. And he knew that if white people in America could accept the egalitarian principles of justice found in Islam, we could turn America into a paradise. Anybody that knows Islam knows that if America understood not only Islam but understood the true teachings of Jesus Christ and accepted them and carried them into practice, this talk would be ended. We would need not discuss color, race, or any of that because in Christ, he says, there is no Jew, no Greek, no male, no female, no bond, no free, 
all are one in Christ. But you don't have that today because you really don't know Christ. And that's why I'm here 